How it, so oh. good to see you all. Am I on? <laughs> yeah, yep, and I am too. So I'm going to do the quick intro. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. It's really lovely to see so many familiar faces and names and also to see some new faces and names um, who are interested in our cooking program. It's really been a lot of fun. Um, my name is Mina Jane. I am one of the programming librarians at the Cary Library, and I am thrilled to be bringing this cooking program to our virtual stage. Um, it's been really fun. Um, I want to thank our foundation. The Cary Library Foundation supports all of our adult programming, and we would not be able to do this without them. Um, without further ado, I just want, well, I do have a little bit of ado. I want to say that um, you are all muted. We are recording. This will be on our YouTube channel and hopefully within the next couple of days so you can view it later. I will be sending out some meeting notes afterwards with um, some recipes from Liza, so feel free to just pay attention. Um, now, without further ado, I would like to introduce Liza Connolly, a Lexingtonian who is a certified health coach, a co-founder of Kids Cooking Green, which is a program we use at the library a lot, and a professional home chef. And um, she immediately jumped on doing this, you know, these two programs and might do another. Um, we were so impressed with you, Liza, last time. So we're excited to have you back again on our virtual stage. So welcome. And, um, and it's all yours. Stage is yours. Thank you. Um, I, I love being here with you guys. It was really fun last time. Um, I actually am a, a restaurant chef as well. I've cooked professionally in restaurants for 12 years and in Italy for two years. So um, I love to cook. I love food. It's connection to people. It's connection to the earth, which is really important that we are nurturing ourselves with healthy foods from the earth and then in turn supporting the environment by choosing to eat healthily and locally. Um, today, I don't know about you guys, but I have lots of leftover rice all the time because I'm trying not to go to the grocery store and rice is something that we can keep in the pantry for a long time. So I thought it would be really fun to make some rice cakes. Um, rice cakes look like the shape of a hamburger and um, if, you, if you've ever been to an Italian restaurant and ordered an arancini, we're gonna make sort of an arancini version of a rice cake with leftover risotto, which is a fabulous use for leftover risotto. And then I thought it would be fun to make a twist on that and do one, we eat, like to make a lot of basmati rice around here. I eat a lot of lentils, um, good fiber, very healthy, protein. And so um, I thought it would be fun to make up a new one for you. Um, so we're gonna use basmati rice and some lentils and then make a quick, simple curry sauce with vegetables. Um, to go with it. So first what we'll do is I have a printout for you guys that will show you how to um, make these recipes but also how to adapt them. So you could make a rice cake with kimchi in it. You know there's different things that you could do. You don't have to follow the recipe direct exactly. Um, and for me that's really fun. That's what makes cooking creative especially with leftovers. So we're gonna start with um, making the two sauces. So we're gonna um, first chop an onion and I'm going to use half the onion in both the sauces. So for something round, I know people are always interested in knife skills. It's very dangerous to cut something round. So the first thing I do is put an arch over the onion, hold it steady, and then cut it through. And then you're going to have flat. It's, it's not rolling around anymore. Okay, so cut off the ends and then you can peel off the outer skin more easily once the onion is cut. So I'll peel that off and I'm going to keep the end intact for this very moment because it helps with dicing your onion and I'll show you what I mean by that. It, and if you wear contacts, the great thing is I used to wear contacts. I can't anymore, but when I was in the restaurant business, I used to wear contacts. So the person who wears the contacts is the one who does the onion slicing because it doesn't, you, you can't cry when you have contacts on. So you'll see this piece of the onion, the stem is holding it together while I'm slicing. So what I'm doing is I'm putting my hand in like a claw shape and gripping down, I'm pushing down and sliding my fingernails back along the onion. And my, and my knife is sliding up and down my fingers like this, so I can't cut them off, okay? And it's being held together by this, so it's not gonna lay out all over my cutting board, okay? 
So that really comes in handy when I turn it this way and see it's still being held together. So I'm gonna turn it this way and use my claw and cut down, okay? And then I can just throw the nub away. Then I'm gonna get my pan and I can just use my knife to pick up these onions and put them in this pan. So this will be for the tomato sauce. I'll get that started. I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil in this pan for the uh, tomato sauce which is what we're gonna serve with the arancini. And then we're gonna make it a little bit of a fancy tomato sauce though. Okay, and then this other onion will do the same for the curry sauce. So sliding my fingers back, sliding the knife up and down my fingers. Then I'll turn it and go the other way to get a nice dice, okay? And just constantly pinching the onion in so that it doesn't splay out, especially towards the end. And then I'll use my knife and move some of these onions into this pan. Now this pan, I'm gonna do the curried sauce, so I'm gonna just use a little bit of coconut oil. Hopefully my stove will come on. Yep, there it is. Okay. Uh, coconut oil is a great oil to cook with over high heat because it doesn't, um, it can, ha it can handle the high heat where a lot of oil, olive oil, you're actually not supposed to cook with it on high heat because it oxidizes and it's not great for you. Um, but coconut oil doesn't do that, so I'll do that. Okay, now while we've got those onions sauteing, we're gonna prep some garlic. Both recipes will be using garlic. So I have a whole bulb here and you can just, you know, peel out one or two pieces. And then to get the paper off, I'm gonna do a couple because I need them for both recipes. Um, you can put the knife on it and tap down on the knife like that. And with kids, when we teach the kids, we put the, um, the clove of garlic underneath the cutting board and push down on the cutting board just so the kids don't cut their fingers off. It's actually better for business when the kids don't cut their fingers off. Um, so then I'm just gonna peel off the paper. And then, again, my trusty knife. So now that I've crushed the garlic, it's not as rolly as it was. So I'm gonna sort of put them in a group because they're very small. So if they're in a group, they're easier to clutch with my claw. And I just pinch same way, move my fingers back, a little bit more challenging so practice on an apple or an onion first and then just chop the garlic so I'm gonna put half in each sauce and th this is not a technical curry sauce this is like a home cooking um, quick curry sauce so then I want to add some ginger I love ginger root I drink a lot of ginger tea but I just um, slice the ginger and smash it and put it in my tea. That's what they do in the Netherlands. If you go out um, to get a cup of ginger tea, that's what you get, a lot of slices of ginger and it's, it's delicious that way. Ginger's really great for digestion to eat after a meal. So, um, oops, my ginger's flying all over the place. Okay, so same with the ginger. I have, um, I like to use a microplane. And if you don't have a microplane, you can smash it and mince it but a microplane is the best. So I just um, grate the ginger up and down. I also have this sort of a grater you can do it on. Um, but just grate your ginger as best you can. And this is gonna go in the curry sauce. And I have this all written down for you guys. And the ginger is hiding back here. So I'll just tap it right into the pan. I love ginger. You gotta have a lot of ginger. It adds a nice spiciness to the recipe as well. Okay, so just go over and tap it into the curry pan. And I'm gonna turn on my, um, I love to set off the fire alarm when I cook. Hopefully I won't do that today. So I'll just give this a little stir. Beginning to cook a little bit. We really want it to caramelize. 
because that's what's going to bring the sweetness out in the recipes. Okay, so with the um, Italian recipe that we're going to make, we could make a puttanesca sauce. Um, it has anchovies, capers, and olives, as well as the tomatoes. And I really like to eat anchovies whenever possible because they're loaded with omega-3 fats, which are really good for our heart and for inflammation, bringing down inflammation. Um, a lot of people take omega-3 pills for those reasons. Um, so I think I'm gonna put some anchovies uh, in this sauce. And I love to toast up the anchovies a little bit. Um, when I worked in Italy uh, with this wonderful, the grandmother of the family was the chef. And she taught me one of my favorite sauces for lamb with anchovies. She toasted anchovies and garlic together and then just added a little bit of red wine vinegar and poured it over the lamb. And the contrast of the flavors was just so amazing. So I'm gonna put that in here for the Italian recipe. Those onions are looking good. Okay, we'll let them go a little bit more. Okay. So while we're waiting, let's get um, some capers. These are um, flower buds from a Mediterranean plant. And I'm going to take out about a tablespoon or two in my hand. And the, the brine is quite salty. So I'm just gonna use my hand as a strainer and rinse out, rinse the, some of the brine off. And then I'm gonna just throw them in the pan. And now I can add, the, let me show you the onion. The onions are coming along. They're, they're wilting. I can smell them. They're getting sweet. They're a little bit brown and caramelized. Um, so we can throw in some of the tomato sauce. Oh, I can smell the toasted anchovies. They smell so good. The anchovies and the garlic, the, that creates that umami flavor that we love so much. So I'm going to use... Um, most, but not all the tomato sauce. This is um, crushed tomatoes, and you can use diced tomatoes as well. It doesn't matter. I mean, your kids probably don't want chunks of tomatoes in their sauce. They probably don't want the anchovies either, but um, crushed is probably better for kids, but I like chunks of tomatoes, but this is what I had in my house. Um, and then let's check on our curry sauce. taking a little bit longer. That one needs a little bit more time. Okay, so I want to be patient with that so that we really want the sweetness to develop for the curry sauce. I'm going to throw a couple olives in. Um, usually I use black olives, but I don't have any in the house at this moment. So the green olives are going to be great too. I'm going to let that simmer. So with tomato sauce, you just want to let the flavors all meld together and um, reduce, the liquid will reduce down a little bit and the sauce will become more viscous. And that's, that's when it will be delicious. Now I make, um, I make herb salt. Um, I grow sage, rosemary, thyme, lots of herbs, but the hard herbs, which are sage, rosemary, and thyme, I call them hard as opposed to cilantro, parsley, basil, which are much softer. Um, I make a really delicious herb salt with those herbs. And if you go, I put my um, website, and my Instagram on the back of the recipe in case you want to go. There's other recipes there, but I make vats of this herb salt. Um, I even grab herbs from Whole Foods or Stop and Shop and make it myself. And um, it's the, the herbs stay fresh because of the sea salt. The salt is a preservative. So all winter long, I taste fresh flavors. And the um, antioxidants and the phytonutrients that are in these herbs are, are really good for you. They um, they're out there all winter fighting the elements and that's what makes them, um, and, and diseases and pests, and that's what makes them, they do that for us too in our body. So I love to put that in my, um, my, my tomato sauce. Okay, now let's see how we're doing. Okay, let's get going on the, uh, okay, so these onions, they could go a little bit longer. I would get them a little bit browner, but let's um, keep the show on the road here. They're, they're getting brown enough. And now I want to add the curry powder. Yes, am I getting a question? No. Okay, so I'm gonna add like a 
and our tablespoon or so. Beauty of um, home cooking and not baking. Baking, you have to measure everything. Uh, and for me, when I home cook, it's more like how much do I want to eat? How many people am I serving? How much spice do I like? I, I just sort of estimate by my taste buds and how many people I'm feeding. So you want to cook the curry powder um, just to bring out the flavor. I'm actually using Curio Spice. has a really great, Curio Spice is um, right here on Mass Ave in North Cambridge. And they come to our Lexington Farmer's Market. But they have a really great basic comfort curry. Um, so again, supporting shopping local. And let's see. All right, we'll let that go. Now I'm going to add uh, coconut milk. Um, I used half the can the other day. I really like this brand, Native Forest Organic Coconut Milk. There's not a lot of junk in here. Um, and it's a BPA-free can if you worry about that kind of stuff, which just means it's, it's, you're not getting the aluminum. Um, I'm gonna pour that in here. And then I'm gonna just add a little bit of water. If I had stock, I could use it, but I don't. I'm just gonna add a little water. And then I'm gonna put some of these um, tomatoes in. Just a little bit of tomato. Helps round out the flavor of your curry sauce. One oh one home cooking curry sauce. Okay, let's let those simmer a little bit, and we will start to make the cakes. All right, let's make some cakes. So risotto. I made this yesterday, and it really helps to have the rice be old. Actually, when you're making cakes, it makes it um, stick together better. So I estimate about three quarters of a cup. We could measure, but I generally don't. But um, let's do a cup per person because we're hungry. Um, so a cup, three quarters of a cup per person should do. So put that in there. And then um, I already added some pecorino to this, but let's add a little bit more. You could grate pecorino or parmesan into here. Um, just add more flavor. And whenever you're gonna indulge and eat your cheese, it's good to have it be gooey, especially if you're eating arancini. So I like to put, um, cheese in the rice. Oh, and then of course we need to use some herb salt because we use herb salt on everything. I'm telling you, if you're sick of cooking and thinking of flavors for food, go get my recipe for herb salt and you can make everything with it. Potatoes, chicken, fish, pasta, rice, eggs. I mean, roasted vegetables. I put it on everything. I've become a very lazy home cook with my herb salt. <laughs> okay, so I've got the rice. Now um, I'm gonna crack one egg in here. The egg is gonna be the binder. This is how I wrote up the recipe. Um, you'll go hunting in your kitchen for your leftover rice, your binder, your, your fillings, and, um, oh, you guys can't see what I'm doing, I'm sorry. Okay, so here's my rice, and my egg, and my cheese, and my herb salts. I'm gonna mix it all together. The egg's gonna hold the cake together. The cheese will help too. And then I'm going to shape it. Now I, I don't eat that much dairy, but traditionally you would put um, mozzarella, buffalo mozzarella in here. But I'm gonna use goat cheese so that I can have this for lunch. Yummy, yummy. So um, I'm gonna pick up my rice cake, or what's gonna be my rice cake. And then I'm gonna put a hunk of cheese in the middle. And when you eat arancini, they're also called soupli, and they're called soupli because when you pick up your fried rice ball, which are delicious, I think Trader Joe's actually sells them in their freezer section, you pull it apart and the cheese makes like a telephone line and that's what soupli means. Okay, so there is our rice cake. Now I need to um, wash my hands real quick. And we're going to dredge them in breadcrumbs. And that's what's going to give it a really nice crust. Um, this is a mixture of panko, um, panko and gluten-free panko, so that I made sure I had enough. 
The gluten-free ones actually are um, more, more coarse, so they, they make a really nice crust. So I'm gonna just pat the crumbs on here. Now, if you were in a restaurant and you really, really wanted a great crust, not a home-cooked version, you could do an egg wash, which would mean you'd put, dredge the cake in flour first to stick to the rice. Then you'd put it in scrambled eggs, um, which would stick to the flour. And then you would put it into um, the breadcrumbs. And then you'd get a really thicker coating. But since we're home cooks and we're not gonna fuss, this is the shortcut, okay? So here is one risotto cake. And then now let's move on and make a cake to go with the curry sauce. So uh, basmati rice um, doesn't is not as wet and absorbent as the, the arborio Italian rice. So we need to help it be wet. Okay. So how we're going to do that is we're gonna. I have lentils. Um, I always eat rice and lentils together. Um, I'm going to put some, you know, two cups of the basmati in my bowl. And I cooked this a couple days ago, actually. Um, and then we need to help it be wet. So I thought it would be great. We're going to put the egg in. But I also thought it would be great to add some protein to this situation and grind up some of my lentils in the Cuisinart. Um, that way, the, the, the um, ground up lentils, will, which are previously cooked, they're going to act like a paste to hold the uh, cake together. So I just I put on the recipe about a half a cup for two cakes. So I'll estimate that. And it's going to need a little bit of help going around, so I'm just going to drizzle in a little bit of olive oil. Where's my spatula? Liza? Yes. Does it matter what kind of lentil you're using? Good question. No, I'm using um, greens, the green lentils, but you could use also red lentils. You could also use mung beans, anything. I mean, if you wanted, and I don't put it past me, I've probably done it, put cannellini beans in with the risotto cake. So no, the sky's the limit. I would just, um, like a hard black lentil might not, you know, is not as wet um, and soft. So, but any of the softer legumes would be great. So that's a really good question. So there's my ground up lentils, which are gonna act as glue and the egg. And we're gonna add a little bit of sea salt to this one. I'm not gonna use the herb salt because it's a different flavor. And mix that around. Oh, the other thing you can add to your tomato sauce, which I didn't do, which uh, I love making things spicy. So I have these wonderful little pepperoncini that are picante from Italy. One of them is enough to blow your mouth off, but I, I love that on occasion. <laughs> so you could add those if you wanted. And then um, herbs, we'll use herbs at the end. And if you don't have fresh herbs, because we have a coronavirus crisis. Um, dried herbs are great too. So pour some more of our panko in the bowl, and then we're gonna get our cake. And this one's gonna give us a little bit more of a challenge to hold together, but it's okay. Because I'll show you what we're gonna do when we cook them. Pat that guy together, with the hamburger. As I always say to my kids when they're cooking with me, oh, don't worry if it doesn't look good. It's not going to look good in your stomach either, but it's going to taste good. Okay, so here's our lentil cake. I'm going to put that down. Now, if you have a few minutes, you could put these in the fridge. Um, it just helps them stay together. Here's our, our, our Italian risotto cake, and here's our lentil and basmati. I'm just going to throw them in the fridge for a sec. If you made them ahead of time, it would be better. But hey, cooking is like living on the edge. Something happens all the time. Okay, 
Tomato sauce is looking good. It's looking um, tighter, more viscous. It kind of, yeah, the oil comes, the oil comes out of the olives and the, it's getting there. I want to make it a little bit tighter, but it's smelling delicious. Okay, that's that. And then here's our curry sauce, which is reducing down. And it's definitely coming together. That's looking really good. So I um, parboiled whatever vegetables you have in your house. It doesn't have to be traditional. Um, I thought I had peas in my freezer. I don't. But I did parboil some cauliflower last night. I just put it, um, cut the florets, put them in a pot with boiling water for five minutes or so, and then strain them out, and they're ready to go today. So I'm going to put the cauliflower in there. I did the same with some carrots, parboiled them, throw those in. Don't have peas, have frozen broccoli, put that in. And that's, those are our veggies for today. So you can be, you know, whatever, whatever you have around. Um, you could put snap peas in here. You could, um, asparagus season is coming. You could put asparagus in here. Um, eat your veggies. That's the most important thing. Okay, so we're going to put this aside. And I'm going to get out another cast iron skillet so that we can cook our cakes. Liza, are you um, using all cast iron pans? I love cast iron. Um, I have one of every size. Um, I love cast iron. I use it a lot. Also, good stainless steel pots are nice. But yeah, I'm pretty much a cast iron addict. Um, my burner that gives me a little bit of trouble. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to steal this one. Okay. Plus, if you use cast iron, you're getting your workout while you're in the kitchen because they're super heavy. Um, so let's do, I'm going to put a little bit of oil in the pan. We want to get it hot before we put the cakes in. And I'm going to wait a second. While we're going to be cooking our cakes, um, I was talking about making it a little bit more elegant, um, the, the final dish. So for the, on top of the risotto cake, we're gonna put the tomato sauce in the bowl, put the risotto cake in the center, and then I thought it would be pretty to have a little arugula salad on top. Um, so I actually grow wild arugula. Um, I brought these seeds home from Italy, but I think you can actually get them at, Wagon, um, at Wilson's Farm. And they're amazing. They're, they come back every year. It's super peppery. It's much more, it tastes so much different than grocery store arugula. Um, I, I just love this stuff. And there's just no greater joy than having no food in the house and running out to your garden in, in your bare feet and snipping off some leaves. So I just like to make a super simple, a um, little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt, and then a little bit of lemon, and that's it. If you like, you know, you could add pepper. And if you wanted, um, if you were having friends over and you wanted to be fancy, you could take um, some of your pecorino and a carrot peeler and just do shavings of pecorino. There's, that's a delicious salad, just arugula, lemon, olive oil, and shavings of pecorino. So that, that's it, salad's done. It'll be beautiful on top of the, um, the risotto cake. So we'll Liza? make it yeah. Um, Courtney asked, do you have a recommendation for a good cast iron pan if you're looking to buy one? You know what? Best thing to do is go to your local hardware store. They're the cheapest cooking pans out there. Um, they're probably 25 bucks. Um, and, or you can go to uh, a camping store. They have them. Um, there's, there's like two brands. I think sometimes they even have them at TJ Maxx. Um, but they're, it doesn't matter, it's cast iron, so you don't have to worry about the brand. But um, yeah, going to a camping store or to your hardware store is where you, where you get them. And they're affordable and they're great. Now the only thing about cast iron is you don't soap and water and scrub it like you would a um, stainless steel pan. You, you wanna you know, scrub it to get the junk off the bottom, but then you really wanna season it. So when you're done with um, scrubbing it, not, not, not with so much soap. Um, you put it on your stove 
and you can heat it and put a little olive oil in there or coconut oil or canola oil or whatever you use. I keep, um, to make it easy for my husband, I um, have this olive oil spray so that the minute it gets scrubbed down from the sink, goes on the stove, a spray of olive oil because you want to keep it, that's how you keep it seasoned with oil. Otherwise they dry out. Okay, so this is getting ready. So now I'm gonna put the oil in because I really don't want to get the oil frying. You don't really want to fry up with olive oil too much. So just quickly put it in, pat the cake, put it down, and I'll move the camera so you can see. Now this one's gonna give us a little bit of trouble, but we're gonna squeeze it together. And put it in the pan. Pat it down. Okay. We're gonna let those crisp up. And while those are crisping, uh, there's a great, there's a few versions of this sauce. Um, I love green sauce. Mina and I were talking before about um, tahini. And I make a lot of sauces with tahini as a base. Um, I'm not gonna make this with tahini, but it's, I just put a lot of herbs in my Cuisinart with tahini, garlic, salt, lemon, a little bit of water, and you have a great sauce. You can use it as a salad dressing. You can top fish with it, top chicken with it, top your rice and beans with it. Today we're gonna make one that's sort of a slant on, uh, you know, a sauce that you would get at an Indian restaurant. Um, we're gonna use, I've, my neighbor has lots of mint and we share herbs, so I'm gonna use some mint. And I actually better put this on Cuisinart so the blade is getting right. Um, you put some mint. So with herbs, you can just, you know, sort of hold the stem and rip the leaves off. And I gave these a rinse before. And just pull off some leaves. The stem, my mom was a horticulturalist and she taught me how that we can know when something's in the mint family. It's kind of fun to do with kids. The stem is square. Mint stems are square. So next time you encounter a mint, check it out. Um, so ripping off some mint leaves. And then I have some cilantro, which is, oh my gosh, I love cilantro so much. And I think I talked about it last time we cooked. Cilantro is excellent herb for detoxing. Um, we have so many chemicals that we're exposed to every day and um, I'm going to save the stems because I use those for marinating things. Um, but cilantro helps us detox. Um, at night while we're sleeping, our liver is detoxing from the pesticides that we've eaten on our food, from the, you know, face cream that we put on that has toxins in it, from, you know, the cars that are driving by, the fire retardant that's in our clothes and in our furniture. It's a lot for our bodies to deal with. So cilantro is one of those things that helps us um, get rid of the toxins. Um, and people who've been on chemotherapy, they juice cilantro every day to help them deal with the, you know, toxic effects of chemotherapy to balance out the good and the bad. Okay, so we're going to hang on to that effect. This great piece of cotton to me. Um, ooh, that one's going to be nice. And this one I think I need a bigger spatula for. That one needs to give it some more heat. So do you see, can you guys see what I'm doing? I'll bring this over. This one, this one is, doesn't have as much glue um, as the, the risotto one. So you can just sort of push it against the side of the pan to help it keep its shape. But it's, it's doing quite well, I have to say, I'm thrilled. So I'll leave those guys to get nice and warm. Okay, now I'm gonna use if you don't like heat, you don't have to use so much, you don't even have to use a hot pepper. Um, this is a jalapeno. The spicy part is the seeds inside. So you don't really wanna to touch them too much with your hands because then if you rub your eyes, your eyes are gonna burn. Um, the jalapeno itself is spicy too, but it's the seeds that are really hot. And if your job in the restaurant is to deal with spicy peppers, you wear gloves. Um, so I'm gonna put some of that in there. And then I have a lime. And um, with the lime, lime, they're just very tight. They're very hard, fibrous. So in order to get the juice the most out of your money, if you roll your lime on your counter, you can really break up the fibers. 
slip. My hands are slippery, so I need to towel. Okay, so I just, I can feel already that the lime is um, softer, so I'll get more juice out of it. So I'm gonna cut it in half. And I, you can have fancy kitchen um, equipment. I don't have fancy juicers. I just use a fork. And I just stick it right into the center of the lime and then squeeze it right into my Cuisinart. Liza, well, we have a couple of questions. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so Shailene asked, Lodge is a very old, well-known brand of cast iron, right? Yes, Lodge, thank you. I couldn't think of the name. <laughs> and we have a question in saying, how do you keep your herbs for maximum freshness and longevity? Really good question. So, as I said before, these things are talking to me, it's great. Um, with, the, with the sage, the rosemary, and the thyme, they're hard herbs, so I always make my herbs salt. That's the best way to do it. Um, they stay fresh. The recipe's on my website. Um, and with the softer herbs, it's a little bit more challenging. So I don't wash them when they come into the house, but what I do is I take them and I'll show you. I just grab them when they come home. I put them in a paper, I wrap them in a paper towel just to you know pick up any extra moisture. And then tuck them in an open air plastic bag and put them in the, um, the drawer of the refrigerator. Uh, or if you don't use a plastic bag, because I try, try not to, um, I throw them, I just throw it in there and it lasts a little bit longer. So, but the best thing to do is to make my, so you know, sauces, if you want to keep something for a long time, like right now, we're not going to the store a lot, but we love our fresh herbs. So I've been making loads of green sauces. So bring it home, wash it, sh you know, shake it off, pat it dry, put it in your Cuisinart with olive oil, garlic, lemon, and then you have green, green herbs, which you can add to whatever. I mean, that's really the best thing to do in this situation. Okay, so let's see if we've got everything. I'm talking so much, I might forget to put something in here. Let me just make sure I've got everything. Um, cilantro, mint, chili, ginger, a little lime. We got a little bit of olive oil and salt. And then we can turn this on and make a green sauce. Reason art is a so happy to have one. There's a couple pieces of equipment I can't live without, and one of them is my cuisine art. A little bit more oil. Mina and I were talking about how to make tahini from scratch, and that would probably require a lot of time with a mortar and pestle. Okay, let's plate these. They're looking beautiful. Um, everything's looking good over here. Okay. Big plates, hungry people. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, um, I haven't put any herbs in this tomato sauce yet, but we should, since we have them. Um, we've got basil. Basil does not really like to be cut, it bruises. So it's just best to like rip pieces of basil leaves um, and put them in, then they don't get bruised. Liza Betty would like to know what, why, what about putting the cilantro in the jar with the water? How did that help? My cilantro is in my water right over here. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I do that too. Um, depends, you know, with the basil, the basil I've tried doesn't really work that well with basil. Um, basil after like a day kind of craps out in a jar of water. I think that the stems just close off faster, even if you do like with fresh flowers, you cut the bottom off. And the cilantro works better that way. Um, but I, I just tend to do the herbs because, the herb oils because it, it literally lasts longer than, you know, a couple days. Okay, but that, that is another way. I have all mine in jars right now. So good question. Okay, so here we have our sauce. I'm gonna put um, in the bottom of the bowl make room for the cake find my trusty spatula the original veggie burger 
um, put the cake right in the middle. And then we have our pretty, there's this. We can put this on our nice little arugula salad on top. And then it's so pretty and looking so Italian, red, yellow, and green. So there's one. And then we'll do the same with the curry. So we got, we have our vegetables in here, which is good. We need to eat our vegetables. We're supposed to eat six to nine veggies a day, but really we're supposed to eat like 20. So definitely get your six to nine in. Um, vegetables are the key to our health. Okay, so we need a little bit, you know what, this sauce reduced a little bit too much when we were, yeah. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more water just so I can get some off the bottom of the pan. And if, if I were serving this right now to someone I loved, I would heat it up a little bit, but since we're just doing this here, just to get a little bit more sauce on there. Okay, then, ooh, that looks very colorful and nice. Scoop up our lentil rice cake. There it is without the cake. And then we'll put the cake on there. And spoonful of our trusty green oil. And also green oil is like another way to just add so many healthy things to your diet. It's, you know, we're supposed to be eating all these vegetables every day. And this is a way to make your food taste so much better and to add yet another green substance. And then if we wanted to make it so pretty to serve it to you guys, we could add some cilantro and then have a beautiful, another yummy hearty dish. Healthy, vegetarian, packed with nutrients. Food. <laughs> wow, those are beautiful and they look Not so delicious. Yeah, there they are. And I mean, that was 45 minutes. And all I did was parboil the vegetables beforehand. The rest we did here. So um, not hard, not hard. Um, yeah, so when Mina asked me about doing this, I, was, I instantly thought of like seven different varieties of rice cakes that you could make. But you could do a Mexican one. You could do whatever rice you have with black beans. And then you could make your guacamole and have a salsa. and you know, add a lot of cumin, you know, there's just the, a, you know, take a culture and play with it. You don't have to know much about the culture, just know a few of the basic flavors and, and go, go nuts. So. Well, thank you so much for that. I'm going to open it up to questions. Um, you can continue to do questions through chat and I'll give them to Liza or she's paying attention, or you can unmute yourself temporarily in order to ask Liza a question yourself. So Courtney asks, how do you know when the rice cakes are done? Good question. Well, I was really looking to, I was really looking at their crust. Um, if they have a nice crust on them, on um, both sides, then you know the heat has probably gone through. Um, but you would just give them, if they're probably like three or four minutes aside, they're probably cooked through and warm. So I just always touch things um, and, and give it a feel, but look for a good crust and then it's probably heated through. Will you share your um, salt recipe, the, the herb salt with, recipe with us too? Yes, um, I put it on the recipes that you're gonna get from Mina in your email. I have my website on there and it's on my website under recipes. But basically what I do is I buy one pack, if I'm buying it in the winter, because it hasn't grown yet in my, in my garden, but buy one pack of fresh sage, one of rosemary and one of thyme. And I do just like I did with the mint, I bring them home, if they're out of my garden, I wash them, I just put them in a bowl of water, strain them out, and then I lay them out on a kitchen towel just for a couple hours so the water comes off. They're not gonna be oven dried, they're not dried herbs, you're just removing, letting the water go away. So once the water's dried off, just pull the stem, whatever it is, if it's thyme or rosemary or sage, just pull the leaves like this and get rid of the stem, then you're gonna put the leaves directly in the Cuisinart with a bag of, let me see if I have it here, yep. I like to use um, 
Celtic sea salt or Himalayan sea salt or Penzi's has um, nice coarse gray sea salt. If you want the coarse one, um, Himalaya, the pink sea salt, it's hard to find. The coarse one is more like little boulders and that's too coarse, but the fine one, so it's hard to find a medium grain Himalayan sea salt. But these salts have all the minerals in them still. Iodized salt, all the minerals have been stripped out. So we actually need minerals from salt. So um, I use this. So you put, I wouldn't put, I would use a whole bag of this to one package of each of those herbs. And I would start by putting um, maybe a quarter of the salt in the Cuisinart because they don't want to grind up the salt so much, but putting the salt in the Cuisinart helps the herbs go around and get chopped up. So um, that's all I do. And then pour the chopped up herbs and a little bit of salt into a bowl, add the rest of the salt, stir it up, put it in jars, give it to all your friends, excellent hostess gift. Never have to think of another recipe the rest of your life, put it on everything and you're done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny. Betsy yeah. said, does it really matter what kind of olive oil you use? That's a really, really loaded question. Um, so there's a lot of, you can look on Google, there's a lot of research about olive oil and fake olive oils. Supposedly um, there are fake olive oils coming into our country. Um, so cold pressed olive oil is the best because it's not changing the oil as much as if it's you know heat pressed or a third press you're losing more of the nutrients each time or it's changing it with oxidation so it's best to have um, a first cold pressed olive oil of course organic no pesticides the letter the least pesticides we can eat the better for our health um so if you really want to know about olive oils um go and read all about them online yeah it's, it's a loaded question. Okay. <laughs> so, um, and it's, still a, it's still a question about, I mean, when I was in Italy, my Italian grandmothers that I cook with, they all cook with olive oil. And here in America, they're talking about don't heat it too high. Now, I wouldn't fry an arancini in olive oil um, because you don't want to be frying in olive oil, but the Italian ladies are cooking with olive oil over there. Um, but we don't want to be frying in high heat. You don't want to have the pan smoking when you're cooking with olive oil, so. Would you explain the history behind the term puttanesca, having spent two years in Italy cooking? <laughs> puttanesca is um, the sauce that the prostitutes would make. It's, it's puttanesca is a prostitute. So it's some, a quick sauce that they could make that was delicious between their rendezvous. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's interesting. Also a loaded question. <laughs> Did you know that, Nina, when you asked? I didn't. Bruce asked um, asked a question. I'm not sure. Oh, good question, Bruce. I know Bruce from Lex Eats. Oh, okay. Well, then he uh, probably knew that that was the answer too. Um, do we have any other questions? Just in case you were doing a cooking class for a group of kids or something like that. Yeah, I wouldn't. Um, I I probably would just avoid the question. It's just a lovely, quickly made tomato sauce with lots of flavor. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So do we have any other questions for Eliza? I don't think so. Well, thank you so much. This has been really wonderful and um, educational, and I feel really, really hungry right now. So I think I'm going to have to go. But <laughs> I wish I could put the food in the computer so you guys could all eat with me. <laughs> well, we'll get back to that someday, right? That we're all right, sharing yeah, food again. Can't wait. Um, actually, one more question. Jean wants to know, can you freeze arancini? Yeah, well, that's what I was saying. Like, yes, you can. If you make a batch of arancini, you can freeze them. Trader Joe's sells a box of frozen arancini and you just heat them up in the oven. So they've already fried them. So they're all intact. And then you just pop them in the oven and heat them up. So I'm not, I don't, um, I, I worked in restaurants and a lot of restaurants have restaurant fires because people drip water over the fry -later and boom, you have an explosion. So I just don't like to fry in my house. It just makes me too nervous. Um, cause, so I don't, I don't do it, but um, people do who feel safe, but <laughs> oil and water don't mix, especially when there's heat around. Got it. So it looks like we have a few more questions coming in, if you don't mind. Um, Betsy says, this is wonderful. Please remind us of your website. 
It's on the bottom of the recipe that Mina's going to send you. That's You'll right. That's right. Zandia wants to know, is there a brand of gluten-free panko right. that you like? Let me look. Um, oh, shoot. I took my trash out. No, um, I, I don't know. I just bought whatever. You okay. Know, it came in a blue, um, blue canister, and it was probably from, you know, Stop and Shop. Um, so I don't know. But the panko is a little bit, the gluten-free one, it has a little bit more texture. So it gives you a little bit nicer crust. <laughs> good hints. I, like, I got lots of good hints today and I think everybody did. So I am going to shut this down, but thank you again, Liza. Thank you everybody who came and we look forward to seeing you um, in more of our programs in the future. Thank you and, so much, Lena. Um, and Carrie Library, you guys are doing a great job keeping the community connected. So important. Mm -hmm. Thank you really? so much. That's our, uh, that's our really? goal. Well, you're doing a fabulous job. <laughs> no, me too. You know, it, it's good to learn how to spend time by ourselves, but for sanity, we all need to see familiar faces and be together. So this is wonderful. Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks everybody. We'll see you again soon. And um, Liza, if you could stay for a minute, I'd really appreciate it. Sure. Bye everyone. Okay. Bye guys. Couple more. Okay. So I'm going to.